And we know there are uh, secret societies, uh, mystery schools, and people who um, who have the wealth of knowledge that they do not want to share with the public for, you know, whatever reason. But uh, we also know, and, you know, because we do research and because this is what we are into, that these secret societies, these people who, who have been in secret societies and in mystery schools and have learned uh, this knowledge, people like myself as well, uh, we teach and the occult releases a lot of information that is coded with the secrets that they don't want to reveal, you know, straightforward. So if you get into occult knowledge, occult science, uh, a lot of it is esoteric, uh, meaning that, you know, you have to be, you have to have a certain understanding of knowledge to understand what the, uh, what the subject is about, what they're actually talking about in a lot of uh, esoteric books and uh, videos. So they have been revealing knowledge, you know, for hundreds of years. So many people have been at this. Uh, the thing is, a lot of people don't really understand the occult. And we know uh, the occult simply means the hidden. You know, esoteric, as I just said, simply means, you know, uh, information that's only going to be understood by, you know, select people, very few people with certain knowledge. So esoteric and occult gets a bad rap in the um you know, mainstream and by a lot of people due to movies and due to the simple fact that they do not want you to understand this stuff. It's the same thing with, you know, uh, Satanism as well. And um, it's all geared to hide a wealth of knowledge that they don't want the public to have. So you have to be brave. As I said before, you know, I had to be really brave to to go at this stuff and to start researching and reading these books and studying this stuff. So, um, you know, it, the journey is, is definitely a tough one when you keep running into, you know, the boogeyman, running into Satan, you know, demons and stuff like that, you know, every twist and turn. And then it takes a strong mind uh, with understanding to realize that this these roadblocks and hurdles are placed in your way for a reason. So now with the occult, with occult science, you know, you have to really understand, you know, what this stuff is about. And um. It's a lot. And it's a lot of people who have been revealing stuff and, you know, releasing books like H.P. Uh, Blavatsky and uh, Manly P. Hall, Alice A. Bailey, people like that. And the reason why they scare you away from these people is, of course, you know, because of the knowledge. So this is this is what we're really going to get into in understanding what occult science is really about. And we actually really got into it a little bit in some of the DVDs before, but it's, you know, it's a lot more to it, but you know, before we start really getting into the uh, mystery school, you know, deeply with, with more videos that I have to come, um, we got to get this understanding. Y'all know how I do it. I like to, you know, begin you with um, information so you can um, be prepared, better prepared for what's to come. So, you know, this is what we're going to talk about. So understand, in the occult world and secret societies, they only want the best and the brightest. If you are smart enough to start to decode this stuff and to understand uh, what they're talking about, it's not going to be hard for you to get into these secret societies if you are in the know. And those who are smart enough, they are welcome into these secret societies. And those who can handle uh, the more deeper uh, information, the more deeper knowledge, are allowed to excel, to grow in degrees and ranks in these secret societies. This is why secret societies, you see them all at colleges a lot. A lot of these uh, uh, fraternities uh, is where the initiation process begins. A lot of people don't realize that, that it starts at school, at colleges. And they put it there and they are allowed to be there because they want the best and the brightest. So if you are in a fraternity and you can, um, you know, excel in school as well and you can excel in your fraternity then you are more likely to uh be able to understand and go along with what what uh, a secret society entails you know you're able to keep secrets you know about um rituals and you know weird things that you know regular people would consider satanic or weird or stuff like that you are really familiar with 
being in a fraternity and um it's definitely something that'll help you along the way once you start getting into these secret societies and uh you know what a lot of people got to understand is and what they don't understand is that they are basically you know once you get to these higher levels the people who are higher than you are just going to use you to fulfill their agenda. That's basically what it is. So they want the best and the brightest on their side, helping them fill their agenda uh, instead of, you know, being somewhere else. It's a waste uh, that they call it. It's a waste of talent. You know, you know, you the force is strong with this person. We want this person. So we want to get him. The force is knowledge. Basically, we're going to get into that, too. So they want you to have a wealth of knowledge to be uh, familiar with rituals. So the best place for all that kind of stuff and the best place where a person is more likely to get into that kind of stuff is, of course, in colleges and fraternities. And we know, you know, the Greek fraternities uh, that we have uh, all throughout uh, America. I know in Philly, we have the Greek week or the Greek picnic where a bunch of uh, fraternities come together and they just party, you know, and stuff like that. And it's Greek for a reason. And, you know, that just goes back to ancient Kemet, where they basically stole the knowledge, the Greeks. So the Greeks was the first ones to really start beginning these uh, mystery schools outside of Kemet. You know, after Kemet fell, the Greeks took the knowledge and it was initiating people into their mystery schools and basically copying off what the Egyptians did for them. And, you know, people like Pythagoras and everything, you know, a lot of people uh, came into Kemet and are really uh, learned some uh, information from the uh egyptians so of course later on more people was uh wanting to get this information that the greeks had because they felt like they can get you know the deeper information uh from the greeks because the greeks was more willing to reveal it instead of the egyptians who wanted you to wait 40 years so you know uh the greeks of course used the information with the romans and they began to build their empires and stuff like that but of course uh people who was in the bloodline or uh, wealthy enough to afford uh, the initiation to come into um, the mystery schools or had a position of power that could be used by, you know, the people higher than them. Then, of course, they was allowed in and they was taught and, you know, they flourished. And, you know, we know the result of uh, what happened. So the mystery schools begin here. And, um, of course, it's the stolen knowledge of ancient Kemet and we see it all over the place but a lot of people don't realize uh you know exactly what it is and in the beginning they basically used this information they used their knowledge to gain wealth of course they wasn't going to reveal too much information that would that would give up their uh advantage in business so they kept a lot of stuff to themselves and you know it was contained within that inner circle of power but, you know, for the most part, they was beginning to, you know, build their empires and that's what they used the information for. Anybody who was wealthy enough, uh, usually bought books, you know, back then books was like, you know, just as good as money. You know, some people would trade, uh, a lot of things for books, uh, for knowledge instead of for, for money, for gold or whatever like that, because the knowledge was everything. And this is where knowledge really started to spread. Um, uh, and, you know, the Egyptians still let people in and taught. But, um, you know, that wasn't enough. Obviously, for the Greeks, they wanted everything for themselves and they wanted to be the ones who basically was in the position of the Egyptians, which is why they mimic everything the Egyptians did. So um, a lot of people came in and was getting a lot of this information and the people who was outside of the inner circle really started to, you know, go through this stuff and understand it. They begin to understand consciousness and everything like that. This is where, you know, the whole secret society uh, thing had to really come into place, the penalty of death and everything like that, because too many secrets was getting revealed. And um, what you had was people really dealing with consciousness because that was that's basically the whole thing uh when you start getting into this information and of course when you're thinking about consciousness the first place that you will go to is you know the dream world i mean if you can think about back then how fascinated uh people must have been about the dream world we take it for granted it's something that i have been obsessed with my entire life and you know did a lot of research on the dream world and um it's amazing you know you go to sleep and you in this completely different world that is that seems real and um it's, it seems like everything that's happening there has a purpose that it's it's a lot of people you know took dreams as being something that 
you got from God or something that you were supposed to see, something you're supposed to understand. People uh, who had dreams about issues, things that pertain to uh, their civilizations, they was looked at as, as psychic and uh, stuff like that. And there was a lot of them back then who came out, who interpreted dreams and who uh, spoke about the dream world, which back in uh, ancient days, they was really fascinated by it. So, you know, this is kind of what's what was leading up to uh, occult science and people really looking into the dream world and everything that pertains to the dream world. Now, science will tell us that the dream world is basically, um, you know, your your brain projecting images that you already seen and can perceive. It's just electrical signals. So, of course, they would say, you know, well, where the hell is the electricity come, coming from? Where's that energy coming from? The brain does not naturally produce this this power, this energy. You know, and um, it doesn't make sense for this, you know, outside energy, it would seem to completely affect the entire body. And it's something that they realized later on that, wait a minute, this energy is separate from us. You know, it's, it's a different this consciousness is totally different from what the body is. And when you understand this, this leads to you know, a whole lot more information. So now this energy is projecting the dream world at the same time, keeping our bodies alive, keeping us breathing, you know, and uh, waking us up in the morning. And it's at the same time, recharging our body, energizing, healing our body. All of this is being done, you know, while you are asleep is an amazing thing that they looked at and said, you know what, this has to be separate from the body because the body is being treated. You know, the body is not treating itself. It's not a physical action that's taking place. It is this energy, this consciousness that is doing all the work. So, of course, they looked at that and said that this has to be uh, separate. So, you know, in the occult world, you know, understand, as I said, the Greeks stole everything. And then we know the Romans, you know, took over the Greeks. So most of the terminology uh, in the occult is uh, in Greek. They use Greek words or Latin words. And this is one of the ways that you can know if somebody is in a secret society or in the, is into the occult by the terms that they use. So you're speaking with somebody and if you're a Mason and they use certain terms that you know is only spoken uh, in the lodge or that Masons use as common words, then, um, you know that this person is most likely a Mason or, uh, is into the occult. So like, we call planets planets, you know, it's a planet, but they call uh, planets theoi. Theoi means the gods. And from theoi, we get aletheia. Aletheia means the breath of God. Translated into Greek, it means uh, truth and enlightenment. So understand, like, in the occult and secret societies, truth and enlightenment is God. Plain and simple. Knowledge is God. You can't get no more clear than that. This is what, what they are talking about every time. Whenever you hear a person speak about God that is a Mason, they are talking about truth and enlightenment. The trick is to fool you into thinking they're talking about Jesus or, you know, Jesus pop, Jesus daddy. And they're talking about truth and enlightenment, which is what Jesus represents. So this is why. At award shows, this is why rappers and people who are supposed to be in these secret societies or be Masons can wear the Jesus piece. This is why they wear it. This is why they think Jesus and why they think God, because they are thinking truth and knowledge, truth and enlightenment. And they have a, um, a deeper understanding of what Jesus is and what he represents. Now, at the same time, they are also thinking they are white masters who put them in. Uh, in place and power, because if you wear the ankh, it is a symbol for life, also truth and knowledge. So, you know, I would prefer to wear an ankh, you know, which I always wear ankh. People always know, always ask me about it. I have a lot of these in various forms. Uh, it's also a symbol for truth and enlightenment. So it's just, it means you understand, you know, you get it, you are conscious, but understand that the Jesus peace and everything, the cross and all that is not just a symbol for Christianity. A symbol is, is a symbol for, you know, uh, whatever your knowledge comprehend that that symbol means. So a cross may mean one thing to you, it may mean something different to another person. So, um, 
this is the kind of stuff that the occult do, how they hide information in plain sight. And um, a lot of people just they really don't understand, you know, what this stuff is really about. The problem is we think that uh, God is this, you know, creator, this all seeing, you know, you know, being with power and who who did so many things. And, you know, when you really get down to it, as I always say, God is a man made word and term. It's just that simple. If a person calls you, you know, out of your name or a different name, unless you respond to that name, it's not your name. Somebody keep calling you Tom. Hey, Tom, Tom. Hey, Tom. And you don't respond. That's not your name. That's not who you are. So unless this guy comes and claims his name, his position and power, then we, we only got to go by, you know, uh, what these people are saying, which nobody has responded to this name. So obviously it must pertain to something else. And it's pertaining to truth and knowledge. It's just that simple. It's no way around that. When you understand the, in the occult, this is what they're talking about. This is all they care about. Everything is about gnosis, a word you will hear a lot in the occult. It's all about knowledge. Everything is about understanding. And, and even when you go through the Bible, when you really start reading and paying attention, it's something that comes up a lot and that you, um, even in the movies, we're going to go through some of that here too. In the movies, what they're talking about and a lot of things. It's, it's so much stuff that's hitting right in plain sight that a lot of people don't realize deals with occult science and, uh, you know, the esoteric, uh, knowledge that, you know, only a few people understand. So even if you wanted to know, you know, what God is, you know, where is God? What is the creator? Who created anything? It requires knowledge. If you wanted power, if you wanted to gain wealth in this world, if you wanted to do anything, it still requires you having knowledge. So knowledge is everything. Knowledge is the key. So truth and knowledge is basically real power. And it's basically, you know, what they teach in the doctrine of the occult, that knowledge is the way. Knowledge is the key because you can think about getting anything. You can think about uh, getting a car or a house and uh, what you have to do to get that. But that what you have to do requires, you know, that's knowledge, that is information. This is something that we all know. So um, if you look at the Bible and you look at religious uh, doctrine, they basically hide knowledge. These books uh, parabolize knowledge. It's coded within the books. So this is why, as I said, these books are in Masonic lodges all across the world because they hide knowledge. The knowledge is hidden within these books. So, um, you know, if you go back to the Saturn Satan series, we talked about how the subconscious mind has all the knowledge locked away and you must combine it with your conscious self. You must become aware of what the, uh, what your subconscious mind is, uh, doing, what it's talking about. You must combine these things and unlock the rest of your brain, unlock the rest of your DNA. There's non enzyme, non protein code and you know gain this information this is what this is what everything is about this is this is what all of it leads up to and um when you look at the uh all of the information and a lot of the books that a, a lot of these people from the occult world put out it's it's the same thing it's coding this information but when you get down to you know the nitty-gritty to the middle it's all about this knowledge of self, having this knowledge of self and understanding what that is so that you can unlock your true potential. Because as the Bible say, as Jesus keep talking about in the book, the power of God, the knowledge, the kingdom of heaven, everything, all that is within you. So the kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. You have to unlock it and have a knowledge of self in order to do that. So knowledge is the key. Now, when people say knowledge of self, what does that really mean? A lot of people struggle with that concept, knowledge of self. Now, it's not just understanding who we are as human beings, but also understanding that we are more than just human beings. Remember, we talked about we are made up of many different uh, types of DNA, animal DNA, animal genes. We have literally trillions, 30 to 50 trillion uh, bacterial cells that's basically all over our bodies. Women have more bacterial cells than men. So you're talking about right now you have, you know, trillions of you know, microscopic, you know, living organisms all over you doing a lot of work. So we're talking about bacterial cells that do everything from, you know, heal your body, heal your wounds, you know, rejuvenate you.